So we're at the airport and we're getting ready to go to Michigan and hopefully I can get some coin hunts in while my son, right there, plays a little hockey and he wins. But if not, hopefully I find some good coins at least. It's almost morning time. Get ready for takeout. See you guys soon. So I'm on the bus on the way to go to get my rental car, but the family decided that since it's snowing outside, they would stay in the terminal while I go get the car. Gotta love them. So we're getting ready to go to a couple of banks. I've got a Bank of America about a mile from my hotel, and I've also got a Chase Bank about a mile and a half from the hotel. They're about a half mile apart. Figured uh, we'll try to get a nickel box and some ones at this B of A and then enough cash to get another nickel box at the Chase Bank. Now, I'm not gonna roll the coins back up, guys. We're gonna hunt them tonight, and then I'm probably just gonna dump them in a coin star. I know, but it is what it is. Figured to have a little fun. Last time I was in Detroit, I had some seriously great nickel boxes. I can't really ship them back in my uh, luggage, so we gotta do something with them, and I don't have time to roll. So here's the first B of A we're driving by. Let's go. All right, we got a box of nickels from B of A and I got 401s. They didn't have new ones. I was hoping to press my luck on some great serial numbers. I checked the ones on the bottom here for the holes and it is circulated nickels. I'm not gonna open them until I get to the hotel room because I don't want a chance spilling them as you guys know. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through one of these straps right now. If there's anything good in here, I'll show it to you. Otherwise, we'll stuff it back in the pocket. And now we're gonna to go to Chase and buy another box of nickels for a Detroit nickel box hunt. Well, good news is that was a dud strap, so it's easy to take it into another bank and buy us a box of nickels with it. The bad news is it was a dud strap. Hopefully those aren't duds either. There was not even a trinary in here or an old bill. All 2009s and 2013s. It happens. All right, let's go to Chase Bank next. Well, as you can see back there, we just left a Chase Bank. I do have a nickel box. Normally I didn't want to open it before I uh, drag it into the hotel, but I do want to make sure before I get back that it is circulated, because if it's not, that's no bueno. And it appears, yep. Circulated nickels. So we got a Detroit box of nickels from Chase and a Detroit box of nickels from B of A. And I'll tell you guys, I'll put a link above here to the last time I did a road hunt in Detroit. We found some early ones and we found some foreign ones as well. So I'm pretty excited. All right, let's get them to the hotel and let's get them hunted. The lighting's not gonna be the best. My discard bin's gonna be a ice bucket from the hotel room. And guess what? I don't have a nickel mat. I forgot to bring one. We'll quickly start off searching these bills, looking for star notes, low sale numbers, fancy sale numbers, you name it, maybe something old. And once I've finished that, we'll kick off time with the open chase box. And then we'll go ahead and uh, do the second box second, if that even made sense. So the star notes aren't rare. They're both part of 3.2 million print runs. But we didn't come to Detroit to look at just bills. We came here to see if the nickels are as good as they were last time. I've already opened this chase box. So we're gonna start with this chase box. And let me get these resituated, make sure we have 50 rolls. And uh, we'll get the sun started. We have the right number of rolls, 50. So we're kicking it off with Chase. Let's do this. We're on roll number five, and that's not gonna be a nickel. So let's see what it is. Are you kidding me? I pull out a buffalo right next to whatever that was. Well, let's, let's look at the buffalo nickel. That's a 1934, 1934 Buffalo with a Denver Mint. Holy cow, that's crazy. We were coming in here to get this penny and it is just a shield penny. It looked different size and the 
in the wrapper, and next next to it is a buffalo nickel, and it's a 34D. Not in the greatest shape, but legible date, legible mint, and the back looks pretty clean. I guess I'll point out that the 34D Buffalo Nickel is hard to find in uncirculated condition. It's one of the more valuable ones if you can find it in high grades. This one right here, the back is probably a fine, but the front is probably a VG8, very good eight. It's definitely better than good, but it's not quite fine. Still, the Buffalo Nickel on the board in the fifth roll that we still have to hunt. Roll number eight, we're gonna have our first 40s nickel of the box. 1940, I believe Philadelphia. I'm not wiping that away right now. Roll number 16, got another 40s nickel here. A 1941 Philadelphia. It's our second from the 40s to go along with three from the 50s and that Buffalo. Roll number 19. And we've got a 1939 here. Can I get a D in Detroit? Nope, just a 1939. But you know what? I will take it. And Ernie Jefferson on the board as well. Roll number 30, and we're going to get our first Canadian nickel of the box. I thought I would see a lot of these up here, but I haven't. Finally got one. 1999. Roll 31. We've got another 40s nickel here. This one's a 1940 Philadelphia. Roll 32, another 40s nickel. This one's a 1941 San Francisco. Roll 36 and another Canadian nickel. That's two for the box. This one is a 1998. Roll 43, another 40s nickel. This one's actually a 1946 out of Philadelphia. Roll 45, guys, and we've got a second Buffalo nickel of the box, and it's got a legible date, 1930. But it's out of Philadelphia, no mint mark. Still, nice find, two Buffaloes in the box, so obviously Chase is not letting us down with Buffalo nickel so far. Five more rolls to go. Roll 46, and we've got a 1942 nickel, but it doesn't have the silver look, and it's not silver, but it's out of Philadelphia as well, so that's a good find. A lot of good early Jefferson finds in this box, plus a couple of Buffaloes. Maybe we can squeeze out one more good find. All right, we finished hunting that Detroit box of nickels from Chase, and it was a pretty good box. We got quite a few in the 50s. The find of the 50s was a 52 Denver, semi-key date. We also got a couple of 54 S's I got to look at when I get home for the S over D mint mark. We got six in the 40s. Of note was a 42 Philadelphia. We got 139 Philadelphia, which I'll have to check for the double die reverse when I get back home. And then the stars of the show were the 1930 Philadelphia and 1934 Denver minted Buffalo nickels. It's always good to find a couple of those. No 2009s, which my friends up north usually tell me they don't find a lot of them, so I wasn't surprised that I didn't get any. And no silvers in this box. However, it's a two box hunt, and tomorrow we'll crack into this B of A nickel box and see if it can beat out the box from Chase. Figure before I get into that second box, we take a little intermission in the snow at the hockey game. All right, it's just snow. All right, we're on box two, and this is the Bank of America box. Figured I'd do a live opening on this one, even though we already saw it at the bottom of the other side with the holes. Didn't see anything special, but you never know what's on top. All right. Nothing standing out is great. Doesn't mean there's not something good inside the rolls. So let's go ahead and get this started. And I'll loop you guys in if I find something we're showing. Roll number seven, got our first find of the box. 1983 Canadian. Roll number nine of the box, and we've got ourselves a 39. Will it have a D or an S mint mark on the back? It doesn't. Still. Earliest find of the box, happy to have it. Roll number 10, just pulled it out, and we've got ourselves a 1941 Ender. It's a 1941 Philadelphia. Same roll towards the back of the stack, another 41, and it is a Philadelphia as well. 
We also found a 2009, my first here in Michigan. Roll number 13 is going to have a couple of finds. Got a 1948 Philadelphia here. And then I believe I have another Canadian right here. And it's a 1988. Roll number 30. Got another Canadian nickel here. This one's a 1996. Third of the box. Roll 32. Got our fourth Canadian in the box. And I think it's our oldest. 1982. Roll number 34 is going to give us one of the rarities of the box. A 40s nickel. Don't have a lot of those. It's a 47S though. And if you look in the 40s, we've only got a handful. A lot of 50s though. It's been a while, but roll 44 is going to give us another 40s nickel here. 1940 Philadelphia. And I will point out that I did find a 1955D. And I don't have my loop or my microscope, but that certainly looks like it could possibly be a D over S. So I'll have to look at that when I get home, but I wanted to show that one off as well. Roll 46 towards the end of the roll, another 41 nickel. This one's a Denver. Roll 48 is going to have a 1948. Out of Philadelphia. All right, we've completed that box of nickels from Bank of America here in Michigan. And no silver, no buffaloes in that box. A lot of Jeffersons, though. Pretty happy about that. We got quite a bit from the 50s, especially. We got four Canadians. A couple of nickels I'll probably be able to upgrade, but I don't have my books here, of course. So I'll take these guys home and see how they do. We did find 109, a nickel with a hole in the head. <laughs> it's crazy. And then... We've got this one 1955 that I'm eager to see under a microscope because it looks like it could be a D over S RPM. We did find that 55 D that I thought might be a D over S. I went ahead and looked at it under the microscope. Man, it's hard to tell if that's dirt or damage or what, but that kind of reminds me of what the D over S would look like. So I probably need to wipe that down a little better to see if that's just dirt that's accumulated. But it sure is accumulating where the S would be. Overall, not as good of a nickel hunt as I had last time I was in Michigan. But that first box with a couple of buffaloes really made me happy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this road hunt with me. If you did, I appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, happy hunting and thanks for watching. Well, the bad news is I had to redeem all those nickels at the Coinstar. So I paid about $20 in Coinstar fees from what I had left and what I redeemed. The good news is, in the Coinstar bin, we found a wee penny. Take a look at this. So in the Coinstar, there was three pennies, a 1969 Denver, an 89 trashed one, and uh, a wee penny. So you can't get mad at that. Let me flip it around for you. 1940, Philadelphia. So we got some of our money back in finding a wee penny. That makes me happy. And the nickel boxes are empty. Got to take them to the trash. It's 12 degrees here in Troy. It is cold. All right. Wanted to show you that.